from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to theCUBE coverage of IBM Think 2021. I'm John Furrier, the host of theCUBE here for a virtual event. Kumaran Siva, who's here with Corporate Vice President with AMD, uh, CVP Hello. and Business Development. Great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Nice to be here. It's an honor to be here. You know, love AMD, love the growth, love the processors. Uh, Epic 7003 series was just launched. It's out in the field. Give us a quick overview of the, uh, of the, of the processor, how it's doing and how it's going to help <laughs> us in the data center and the edge. For sure. No, this is, uh, this is an exciting time for AMD. This is probably one of the most exciting times uh, to be honest. And, and uh, in my 20, 20 plus years of uh, working in the semiconductor industry, I think I've never been this excited about a new product um, as I am about the, uh, the uh, third generation Epic processor that we just announced. Um, so the, the Epic 7003 is what we're calling it. It's a series processor. It's just a fantastic product. Um, we not only have the fastest server processor in the world with the um, AMD Epic uh, 7763, but we also have the fastest CPU core. So the, the processor being the complete package, the complete socket. And then we also have the fastest core in the world with the, uh, the Epic um, 72F3, F4 frequency. So that one runs, runs super fast on each core. And then we also have 64 cores in a, in a CPU. So it's, it's, it's addressing both kind of what we call scale up and scale out. So it's it overall, overall just, just an enormous, enormous product line that, that I think um, you know, will, be, will be amazing within, uh, within IBM, IBM Cloud. Um, the processor itself includes 256 megabytes of L3 cache. Um, and you know, cache is super important for a variety of workloads and the large cache size we have shown or we have seen scale in particular cloud applications, but, but across the board, um, you know, database, uh, Java, all sorts of things. This processor is also based on the Zen 3 core, which is basically 19% more instructions per cycle relative to our Zen 2. So that was the prior generation, the second generation Epic cores, which you called Rome. Uh, so this, this new CPU is, is actually quite a bit more capable. It runs also at a higher frequency with both the 64 core and the, uh, the frequency optimized device. Um, and finally, we, we have um, what we call all in features. So rather than kind of segment our product line and charge you for every little, you know, little thing you turn on or off, we actually have all in features, which includes, you know, really importantly security, uh, which is, you know, becoming a big, big theme and, and something that we're partnering with IBM very closely on. Um, and then also things like six, uh, 128 lanes of PCIe Gen 4, um, our RAM interfaces that go up to four terabytes. So you can do these big, large, uh, large um, in-memory databases. Uh, the PCIe interfaces gives you lots and lots of storage capability. So all in all, super products. Um, and we're super excited to be working with IBM on it. Well, let's get into the, some of the details on this impact because obviously it's not just one place where these processors are going to live. You're seeing a distributed surface area, core to edge, um, cloud and hybrid is now in play and it's pretty much standard. Now multi-cloud on the horizon. Companies are going to start realizing, okay, I got to put this to work and I want to get more insights out of the data and there's a zillion applications that are evolving on this. Uh, but you guys have seen some growth in the cloud with the, with the Epic processors. What can customers expect and why are cloud providers choosing Epic processors? You know, a big part of this is actually the fact that I that AMD um, delivers upon our roadmap, so we we kind of do what we say and say what we do, and we delivered on time. Um, so we actually announced, I think, it was back in August of 2019, our second generation Epic part, and then now in March we are now on the third generation, very much on schedule, very much um, in thin expectations, and meeting the performance that we had told the industry and told our customers that we we're going to meet back then. So it's a really super important piece is that our customers are now learning to expect uh, performance gen on gen and on time from AMD, which is, which is uh, I think really a big part of our success. The second thing is I think you know, we, we are um, a leader in terms of the core density that we provide and cloud in particular really values high density. So the 64 core is, is, is absolutely unique today in the industry and that it is, has the ability to be offered both 
in uh, bare metal um, as we have been deployed in, uh, in IBM Cloud and also in virtualized type environments. So it has that ability to span a lot of different use cases um, and you can, you, know, you can run the each core uh, really fast, but then also have the scale out and then be able to take advantage of all 64 cores. Each core has two threads, so up to 128 threads per socket. It's a super powerful uh, uh, CPU and, and it has a lot of value for, um, for, the, um, for the cloud, cloud provider. There are actually about uh, over 400 total instances, by the way, of AMD processors uh, out there. And that's of all the flavors, of course, not just the third generation, but still it's, it's starting to really proliferate. And we're trying to see uh, uh, AMD epic all across the cloud. More cores, more threads, all goodness. I got to ask you, you know, I interviewed Arvin, the CEO of IBM, before he was CIO at a, at a conference. And, you know, he's always been, I know him, he's always loved cloud, right? So, um, but he sees it a little bit differently than just being like copying the clouds. He sees it as we, we see it unfolding here at Think, hybrid. Um, mm -hmm. And so I can almost see the playbook evolving, you know, Red has an operating system, cloud and edge is a distributed system. It's got that vibe of a system architecture and almost, you know, got processors everywhere. Could you give us a sense of um, the over, an overview of the work you're doing with IBM Cloud and what AMD's role is there? I'm curious, could you share for the folks watching yeah. too? For sure, for sure. By the way, IBM Cloud is a fantastic partner to work with. So, so first off, you, you talked about, um, about the uh, hybrid. Hybrid Cloud is a really important team for us and that's, some, that's an area that we are definitely focused in on. Uh, but in terms of our specific joint partnerships, and we, we did an announcement last year, um, so it's, it's, a, it's somewhat public, but we are working together on AI where IBM is, a, is an undisputed leader with Watson and some of the technologies that you guys bring there. So we're bringing together, you know, it's kind of this real hardware goodness with IBM's prowess and know-how on the AI side. In addition, IBM's also known for, um, you know, a really enterprise grade uh, uh, security and working with some of the key sectors that need and value um, reliability, security, availability um, in those areas. Uh, and so I think that partnership, we have quite a bit of, um, uh, uh, quite a strong relationship and partnership around working together on, uh, on security and doing confidential compute. Tell us more about the confidential computing. Uh, this is a joint development agreement. Is it a joint venture or joint development agreement? Take, give us more detail on this. Tell us more about this uh, sure. announcement with uh, IBM Cloud and AMD confidential computing. So that's right. So, so what, uh, you know, there's some key pillars to this. One of this is being able to, uh, to work together, define um, open standards, open architecture. Um, so jointly with an IBM and also pulling in some of your assets in terms of Red Hat. Uh, to be able to work together and pull together a, a confidential compute that can um, so, so some some key ideas here we can work with uh, work within the hybrid cloud we can work within the IBM cloud and to be able to provide you with uh, provide provide our, our joint customers our end customers with, uh, with with unprecedented security and reliability uh, in, in the cloud. What's the uh, future of processors? I mean, what should people think when they expect to see innovation? Um, certainly data centers are evolving with core, core features to work with hybrid operating model on the cloud. People are getting that uh, edge relationship and basically the data center is a large edge. But now you got the other edges, we got industrial edges, you got consumers, people, wearables. You're going to have more and more devices, big and small. Um, what's, the, what's the roadmap look like? How, could, how do you describe the future of AMD in, in the mm -hmm. IBM world? Well, I, I think I think our IBM AMD partnership is bright. Our future is bright for sure. And and I think there's there's a lot of key pieces there. Uh, you know, I think IBM brings a lot of value in terms of being able to take on those upper layer upper uh, uh, layers of software and that and the, the full stack. Um, you know, IBM's strength has really been you know as a systems company and as a software company, right? So combining that with uh, AMD's uh, silicon. Uh, and uh, and device and CPU devices really really is a, is, a, is a great combination. I, I, I see you know I see um, growth in uh, you know obviously in in, in in deploying you know kind of this this uh, scale out model where we have these very large um, uh, you know large core count CPUs. I, I see that trend continuing for sure. Uh, you know I think that that is going to that, that is sort of the way of the future that that you want. Uh, cloud native applications that that can scale across multi uh, multiple cores within a socket and then across 
uh, clusters of CPUs with, within the data center. Um, and IBM is, is in a really good position to take advantage of that and to, to be able to, to, to drive that within the cloud. That in com combination with IBM's presence um, on-prem, uh, and so that's, that's where the hybrid, uh, hybrid cloud value proposition comes in. Um, and so we actually see ourselves uh, you know, playing in both sides. So we, we, we do have a very strong presence now and increasingly so on premises as well. And we, we partner, we, we are, we're very interested in working with IBM on, the, on, on premises uh, uh, with some of, some of the key customers and then offering that hybrid connectivity uh, onto, onto the, the, uh, the IBM cloud as well. Uh, IBM and AMD, great partnership. Great for clarifying and, and sharing that insight. Kamar, appreciate it. Uh, and thanks for, for coming on theCUBE. I, I do want to ask you while I got you here, um, uh, kind of a curveball question if you don't mind. Um, you know, as you see hybrid cloud developing, one of the big trends is this ecosystem play, right? So you're seeing uh, connections between IBMs and their, and their partners being much more integrated. So, you know, cloud has been a big API kind of model. You connect people through APIs. There's a big trend um, that we're seeing, and, and we're seeing this really in our reporting on SiliconANGLE, the rise of a, of a cloud service provider within these ecosystems where, hey, I could build on top of IBM cloud and build a great business. Um, and as I do that, I might want to look at an architecture like an AMD. How does that fit into to your view uh, as a doing the business development over at AMD? I mean, because because people are building on top of these ecosystems, they're building their own clouds on top of clouds. You're seeing data clouds, you're seeing these kinds of clouds, specialty clouds. So, I mean, we could have a cube cloud on, on top of IBM maybe someday. So, so I might want to build out a whole, <laughs> I might be a cloud. So yeah. that's more processors needed for you guys. So well, how sure. do you see this enablement? Because IBM's going to want to do that. It's kind of like, I'm kind of connecting the dots here in real time, but what's your, what's your take on that? What's your reaction? No, I think, I think, that's, I think that's right. Uh, and, and I think AMD is in a, is in a pretty good position uh, with IBM to be able to, to uh, enable that. Um, we do have some very significant OSV partnerships, um, a, a lot of which that are leveraged into IBM, um, such as Red Hat, of course, uh, but also uh, like VMware and Nutanix. Um, these provide, th these OSV partners provide kind of the base level infrastructure that we can then build upon and then have that, have that API and be able to build, uh, build um, uh, the the, the multi-cloud kind of environments that that you're talking about, um, and I, I think that I think that's right. I, th I think that is that is one of the uh, you know kind of uh, future trends that that we will see. Uh, you know, services that are offered on top of IBM Cloud that that take advantage of the the uh, capabilities in the platform that come with it. Um, and you know, the bare metal offerings that that IBM offer on their cloud is also quite unique um, and, and high and, and very performant. Um, and so this, this actually gives, um, I think, uh, the the uh, kind of the, the uh, I may call them a meta cloud, <laughs> a unique ability to kind of go in and take advantage of, of the AMD hardware at a performance level and a, and a, at a um, uh, to take advantage of that infrastructure better than they could in in other cloud environments. I think that's that that is actually very key and and very uh, one of, one of the one of the uh, features. Um, of the IBM yeah. cloud that, that differentiates it. Yeah, There's so much headroom there, Kamar. Really appreciate you sharing that. I think it's a great opportunity. As I say, if you're you want to build and compete, find that there's no the white space with no competition, or be better than the competition. So, as they say in business, thank you for coming on, and sharing. Great, great future ahead for all builders out there. Thanks for coming on the cube. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, IBM Think Cube coverage here. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.